Hello. Plasticity is an absolute boon when it comes to hard surface modeling. There are many things you can do in it much, much quicker than you can in other types of 3D software. However, it being a NURBS based CAD software, it's not really suited to making more organic shapes. So with a lot of your projects, you will reach a point where you really want to push your model from this to something like this. So stick around because in this video, I'm going to show you a workflow on how you can achieve this using a mesh that you made in plasticity, bringing it through Blender and ZBrush. Welcome back to Take Refuge 3D with me, Peter, and let's just get into it. Step one, export your model as an OBJ file. You won't need to crank it up to full details as we will be remeshing the model at some point anyway. Just make sure you export the mesh as an NGON based uh, mesh and also ensure that you've got all of the curves and form you will need for the model you're making. Uh, the default settings in most cases should be fine. These steps will make your life a little bit easier in the next step. And just as a quick tip, if you do decide you want to add a lot of detail to the export for whatever reason, it might give your CPU a little bit of a run for its money later on. So just bear that in mind. And then we move on to step two, UV unwrapping your model. Now we're going to import our OBJ mesh into our 3D software of choice. In my case, that's Blender, but any feature complete 3D package will be fine as long as it has a UV unwrapper. This UV unwrap is not for the final texture, so we don't need to spend time carefully placing any seams or anything like that. We just want to separate out our individual aspects of our mesh into their own UV islands. So this will give us a lot more control over sculpting our details later on, which you will see. Now in Blender, you can select an, uh, an edge, any edge, and you can press hold down control and left mouse click another edge and Blender will try and find the shortest path. So that's a quick tip. However, I use a plugin called Ngon Loop Select in which you can just double click the edge on an Ngon and we'll try to determine the edge loop. It doesn't always work, but once you get the hang of it, it's kind of really good. Now you can get it online for a couple of bucks. I'll dump a link in the description. Now, if you want to use this method instead, hashtag not sponsored. Now you can test out your islands by hovering your mouse over one of the islands and pressing the L key on your keyboard. And then down the bottom left, you'll see a dialogue and you can change the selection mode to scene. And that way you can check the integrity of all your islands and the loops and make sure that there's no gaps. Once you're happy with the separation of the process, you can hit U, unwrap. And if you did not follow my advice in the previous step and have a very dense mesh, be prepared to wait for a little while. And I know this because I didn't follow my advice the first time round either. Now that you've unwrapped your mesh, you can triangulate it. I used the create high poly button on Ngon Pro so that I can maintain the form of the mesh better in this step. The free basic version is still available on Gumroad, so you can get it completely for free with this functionality, so feel free to go download it, or you can pay for the pro version and get all of the features. Link to all my stores are in the description. Now that you've got your mesh triangulated, you can export it as your preferred file type. I use FBX as I find it gives me a lot less problems with uh, object scale moving between multiple softwares. So now we're going to get to the fun part, which is step three, sculpting. Once in ZBrush, you can import your mesh, ensuring it's converted to PolyMesh 3D. Uh, then you can press Shift plus F, holding down Shift to see your poly groups. All going well, you'll see that your mesh is a single color, indicating that your mesh has only got a single poly group. After this, scroll down to the tool menu um, and find the poly groups sub menu. Now, if you exported your mesh properly with UVs, you'll see a button saying something to the effect of auto groups by UV. This will be grayed out if your mesh does not have UVs. Once you've got that sorted, click it. Let ZBrush do its thing. It might take a moment on a denser mesh. 
and the UV groups that you made earlier in your 3D software will all become separate colors. These are called poly groups. The next step is you can use the DynaMesh feature of ZBrush to re-mesh um, your, your mesh from the, the low poly one that you've got um, to for this project that you can see, I used between three and five million polygons. You can work out how much detail you need for your project. Then after that, you can simplify the poly groups by selecting and isolating and masking out different poly groups and then clicking the group by masked uh, option. Here's a little bit of a recording of the process so you can see how it works. Okay, so now that we've auto grouped it by UV, you can see that we've got all of these different colors and these colors are poly groups. If you're not familiar with ZBrush, poly groups are a super powerful way of um, uh, breaking up your mesh. Okay, so I'm going to start to control shift click these so you control click shift, shift click once and you isolate one and then you control shift click again and you just isolate um, these other ones from it so I'm just going to separate these uh, extruded pieces out and I'm going to make them all one poly group now you can see the holes in the mesh behind where they exist that's okay that's very normal Okay, and now that I've done that, I think I also want to do it with these two here. Okay, so we're going to really simplify our mesh. Now, if we zoom out, and I'll just press tab, so we've got our tools up on screen. We zoom out, and we just control and drag. You'll mask everything. If you control and um, control shift click again, you'll bring the unmasked parts back. And then you can press control and click somewhere outside of the mesh. And it will mask everything now it's a little bit hard to see what's going on because i'm viewing the poly groups now if i press shift f to go back you can see that i've masked out those cloth areas okay all those those extruded areas that are going to be cloth okay i'm going to use group masked um i don't remember where it's in here because i've brought it down here oh, it's down here under poly groups group masked so I'm going to make those into a poly group and if we press Control F you can see that all of those have gone yellow. Now once you've sculpted your high poly you can then make a duplicate and use the Z remesher and project functions, super powerful tools in ZBrush, to lower the poly count of your duplicate object to a lower number. I think I somewhere between for Unreal 5, somewhere between 60 and 100,000 polys. It doesn't really matter if you're using Nanite. Now, if you want to use your poly groups on the high poly to save as vertex colors in the texturing software, make sure you go down to Poly Paint and click Poly Paint from, the poly, from poly Groups, and then that will paint your object as your poly group colors. I then renamed my high and low poly meshes and exported them from ZBrush together and I quickly went back into Blender to one click unwrap my low poly with Engon Pro and then I packed it with UV Pack Master. You can skip that step if you don't want to pack it. And then I converted the vertex colors using Engon Pro as well just to make them a little bit more compliant with other software because I sometimes get problems uh, exporting vertex colors from Blender. I then baked all my maps out, my normals and ambient occlusion and curvature and everything in Marmoset Toolbag 4. And then I used those in Substance Painter to paint the uh, model. And you can see the results here for yourself. Let me know if you want a breakdown of how I textured this. I'm happy to upload that as well. Now on the topic of texturing, I've been using this new software over the last couple of days called Instamat. It has a free a free with T's and C's license I might add and it seems to be taking substance and pertinently Adobe on directly offering pretty much all the functionality of substance designer sampler and painter and more features as well all rolled into one I'm really impressed with it so far it's quite a new software but I found I was able to directly move my substance designer knowledge over so expect a video on that soon uh, like, sub, ring the bell, and I'll see you in the next one. Tschüss!